Today's question comes from an educator who is like, I hear this idea of mentor text all the time, but I don't really know what to do with that. So if you are the same and you're thinking, I would love to use mentor text, but I'm not really sure, keep watching. I'm gonna give you a process from start to finish for how to use mentor text in your writing instruction. Welcome back, my name is Lanisha and I love to talk about writing. So if you are here, please make sure you subscribe and check out all the videos on my feed, check out the different playlists. If you have a question that you would like to see answered in an upcoming video, always feel free to leave that comment below. Now let's go ahead and get into today's question about mentor tech. So what I have is a five step process that I'm gonna just walk through exactly what you need to do in order to use mentor text in your class. So first, let's just talk about what is a mentor text. It can literally be anything. I loved reading books by Katie Wood Ray years and years and years ago. She had a mantra that she would always say, and it would be, if you can stack it, you can study it. And then she would go through and she would show how she would collect pieces of writing that were high quality and that they also emulated what her students were supposed to write. And she would teach those pieces of writing to her students and they would point out the why it's high quality. And now here's the deal, let me just stop right here because I also have read The Writing Revolution and there are, I won't say conflicting thoughts there, but they definitely have different thoughts there. And I am somewhere in the middle, if I'm being honest, because I do believe and I have seen in my own practice for many years, the power of using a mentor text, The Writing Revolution by author Hochman and Wexler. There's a segment in the book where they sort of talk about how that's not enough. Like you can't just give kids a mentor text and say like, do what they do because if they're lacking the skills in order to really execute that, then it's not really helpful. And so there's a lot to consider. That's not really the point of this video, but I did want to hold space for it because you know, it's a thing. So anyway, using a mentor text, that's the idea, right? So we get this high quality piece of writing and we show students what it is. So for me in kindergarten and first and even second grade, I'm teaching a writing unit. The first thing I want to do, so step number one, is I have to know what we are creating at the end. What are, what are we working toward? Are we writing books? Are we writing articles? Are we writing persuasive letters? Are we writing opinion pieces? what is the product? Because if I don't know what it is that my students are supposed to be doing by the end of this unit, I don't know how to pull in a mentor. I don't know how to find the mentor. And then even that there are layers because you want to find an appropriate mentor. So one thing for me that was always frustrating as a kindergarten or first grade teacher, it would be time to do maybe like a persuasive unit. And if you Google persuasive writing book list, you're going to get the same books. Okay. There's going to be like, don't let the pigeon books. There's going to be a book called earrings by Judith. Last name starts with a V. Um, and th here's the thing for me, those books were great at getting my students to move in the direction of conceptually understanding what it means to persuade. But when it came time for them to actually write something, they were trying to write pigeon books. They were trying to ask for something in the same way that the earrings book did because the model was not something that looked like something they were able to recreate or to create their own version of. And so mentor text can be tricky because I think both are important. So on the one hand, I do want to provide quality pieces of literature, but I also have to consider I need to show them something that looks like what I want them to produce. So a couple things to consider here. Yes, we need the picture books and it can even not even be a book. It might even be an article that you print off of the internet. Maybe you found it in a magazine. Maybe it's a poem. Whatever it is, you want to look at this piece of writing and think, Yes, my students need to see this because then they can look at this as a teacher for their writing pieces. Great. There are times where I'm jumping into something and I simply cannot find anything that I need. Can't find a book, can't find an article. What am I supposed to do? Enter the teacher mentor text. You write your own. I even like to do both. If I can find books that are already published, great, but I'm always gonna create a teacher version of it, okay? So that, before we get into like the, the specific steps, that's like the overview of like why we need mentor texts, where do we get them from, 
what's the point of them, right? It's it's so that we can show our students where we're headed, okay? It's like without vision, the people perish, okay? So we need to have a vision. Um, one thing I also heard Katie um, Wood Ray say one time, she was just giving different examples of how this is what we do in our lives. Like we always want a writing mentor. Um, if you, I remember her specifically saying, if you were asked to write an obituary for somebody in your family who, or a friend that passed away, one of the first things you would probably do is you would look up other obituaries and you would say, okay, they open by including information about their early life and then they move on to this. And like, you would look at the structure, you would compare a couple versions and then you would be able to sit down and write because obituaries are something that most of us are not writing every single day, unless that's your job. And then, um, and so if you're not writing those every single day, you probably don't have a really clear idea for the structure or like what needs to be included. And so you're gonna look up some versions and that is basically what a mentor text is. You even do it when you sign cards at the office or at school. If there's a birthday card going around, you're just going to get the card and you're not just going to scribble something down. You're going to catch a vibe and you're going to look around and say, oh, okay, everyone just signed their name or, oh, people are writing a little message for the person. So let me also write a little message like it's a mentor, right? Like, what are we doing? What kind of writing are we doing here? That's the point. Okay. So we've got that covered. So let's get into like the nitty gritty. So if I know what I want my students to produce, I've pulled some mentors that really um, either help them conceptually understand or it helps them to see exactly what they're about to be producing. How do I introduce this to my students? So my process is I start the unit like a mystery every single time. It became a game in my classroom almost because the students would know we just finished a unit, we're starting a brand new unit and they literally in kindergarten were like, oh, what kind of writing is this gonna be? Like what kind? And they knew the process because what I would do is I would have all the mentors, teacher created mentors, published mentors and also student mentors. If I was fortunate enough to collect books from students in the past that went through you know, the same unit, maybe they created really beautiful pieces of writing that I could use to teach other kids. That's another really powerful strategy that you can use. I'm gonna put a couple examples here of books that I begged. Oh, can Mrs. Tad please go make a copy of your book because your book is gonna help kids in the future make their books even better. I was super fortunate this year, uh, the school that I worked at had a color copier. I was able to go make some color copies, make a, a version for myself and send that student home with their book. And so I've got this stack, right? Published teacher and student mentors. I don't tell the kids what the books are. It's a game. It is your job to guess. Now, as the teacher, depending on the grade level, you have to make it obvious enough so that they can catch what kind of writing is happening. And I do that by thinking aloud very clearly. So let's just talk about an example here. Let's pretend we're jumping into a unit and it's all about informational writing. So we're gonna be picking topics, we're gonna to be uh, the experts, we're gonna be including facts, information, all the things, okay? Um, which also another quick tip for this sort of writing, if you're a kindergarten first grade teacher, look in your guided reading library because those books are probably not even being used anyway, especially with the move towards more decodable readers. You might have a library full of guided, you know, leveled readers. And you're like, what do we do with these? Pull them because they might make really great mentors for writing. Because usually if you pull a book that's at a level D, E, F, it's going to have the amount of text that the kids are probably able to write in their books as well. So look in your guided reading library. That was a game changer when it came to this. So I'll show you even here are a few examples. I pulled these from my guided reading library and they were all examples of the books that we were about to write, but I didn't tell them. I just read them out loud. So I pulled up this terrific tiger's book. And as I'm reading it, I was very obviously saying, wow, I am learning so much about tigers. This book is full of information about tigers. And I, I do the thing. I put the tiger book away. I pull out the next book. Maybe it's about houses and I read it, right? And it takes like a minute to read because it's a leveled reader. And I go through and I go, oh, wow, I just learned a lot of information about houses. Can you guys believe that this is so much information about houses? There's facts, there's examples, you know, and I'm doing the whole thing. And so the kids are very obviously able to see where I'm headed. Then I pull out my teacher example and I say, oh my gosh, 
this book is all about one thing and it's giving information. So I keep saying the same things over and over and over and we make a list. So I might get out uh, my screen if I have a smart board or if I have a chart paper and I might say, okay, so far, guys, what do you notice about this? And I'll give you an example here. Like I would do this digitally and I would talk about the different things that we were noticing in the books and I would record them at the top. So it might be like, oh, all these books are about one topic. So that would be at the top. And as we read the book, I would drag a check mark over and say, okay, was this book about one topic? And they'd be like, yeah. Did this book give us facts and information? Yeah. And so we would put check marks. And this is something I might do over a lesson or two, right? Maybe it takes one or two sessions, maybe even three sometimes, depending on um, the content. But I would have to get through this stack of books, very clearly expressing, like thinking aloud what these books are doing. And then they would help me start to create a chart or a checklist. Why am I doing this? I'm trying to get them to have a crystal clear picture of the kind of writing that they are about to do. I'm trying to make sure that they know without a shadow of a doubt, we're not making stories this time. We're not writing articles this time. Now we have moved over and we're going to be making articles or we're going to be making books that give information that are about one topic. So if I'm walking around and we're collecting ideas and we're starting to get this unit going and I see a story about princesses flying around in outer space, I can very clearly pull my stack of mentors out and I can say, does that book really do the same kind of work that these books are doing? And they can pretty much say yes or no, which brings me to another very important part of this. So you can see we're going through check, check, check. Everything's green. Throw in a non-example. Okay, so you can see here is this little silly monster book. So after I've read book after book after book, they all are about one thing. They all are informational, you know, doing the whole thing. Then I'm going to pull out a book like this, like monster, you know, whatever it is. And the vibe is so different that even in kindergarten, they're like, that doesn't really. And then I'll say, oh, my gosh, does this book belong in this pile? And I'm telling you, the entire class will say, no, that book was silly. That book wasn't even real. That book was, it just didn't match. They can understand that is a different kind of writing. There's a time and a place for that kind of writing, but it's not during this unit. And it is such a powerful way to get kids to get into the genre of writing. And so while I didn't like bullet point the process out, that's basically what you would do. It'd be like step one, you have to know where you're going and collect the mentor text. Step two, you have to make sure you have student examples, teacher examples that also match the level of writing that your students are going to be doing. Once you have that, you're going to read the books. You're going to study it. You're going to think aloud. Make sure that your students can really hear what the books are doing. Then you're going to have step four, collect notes on it or do some check marks and X's, throw in a non-example so that they can see this book fits, this this book does not. And I, I say book a lot because I'm so primary based, but it does not have to be a book. If you guys are writing articles or poems or whatever it is, just substitute that word in your mind for me. And then that last piece is to just really make sure you're holding them accountable and making sure that all of your students are within the scope of the work for that unit. So if we're writing informational pieces, I'm going to be armed and ready with that stack of mentor text to remind them this is the kind of work that we're doing. I'm going to have the chart available so they can look up and see when I am thinking of ideas today, if we're doing informational writing, I need to be thinking of one topic that I can write all about that I know a lot of information about. And then the cool thing is, as you're studying these mentors, things are going to come up that they are going to see and they're going to be like, oh my gosh, I can put that in my book. Like that Tiger book that I showed you. It was an informational book. It was a leveled reader. But like, look at all the nonfiction text features that are in there that we were able to study. And then they were able to put those things in their writing. So they saw labels. They saw like maybe captions. They even realized these are photographs and not drawings. So could I maybe write on a paper, take a picture of my writing and then put it in Seesaw because if they could do that, they could bring in real pictures that they found on the internet of their topic. So if they were writing about, you know, puppies, they would go online, they'd find pictures of puppies to match their writing and they would put it in there. No problem. So those are the sort of things that made this work so powerful. So if you were thinking about doing a mentor text, give it a shot. All of my writing units that I offer inside of my Reimagine Writing Program, every single one of them that is genre specific starts with that process. 
I include mentors in there. I wrote them myself. They are pretty close to what I would expect students to be doing on that grade level, but that still doesn't mean that you can't create your own. You know, I literally just pull up PowerPoints and pull in pictures and words, and I create my own mentor text all the time. And again, if I do find published books that do the work of it, great, but I find a lot of times creating my own are really helpful because I can just really put the components that I wanna see in my kids' writing right in there, okay? So I, so like I said, all of my units sort of start off with the exact same process. It becomes like a fun little game for most of my students and they're so excited, like, what kind of writing are we gonna be doing next? We just finished informational and then maybe I'm gonna repeat the process the next month when we're doing a new unit but with poems, but I'm not gonna tell them that it's poetry. I'm just gonna read a poem and I'm gonna say, oh my gosh, wow, those words really made me have such a strong feeling and, oh, and I'm gonna read another poem and then read a bunch of poems and then I'm gonna throw in uh, an informational book and say, does this fit? And they're gonna say, no, it helps them catch the vibe. So mentor texts are so, so powerful. I hope you try them. Uh, what are your favorite mentor texts that are published? If you wanna drop them in the comments below, I always love just having a community of people, you know, to share those published mentors, even if it's one that doesn't really show kids exactly what they're supposed to write, but it gets the conceptual piece there. Drop those in the comments. I would love to see your recommendations, especially if you have some that are like, not as well known or maybe they're newer books um because like i said you can google a list and a lot of the lists are very similar and so i love to find new books that really get at the heart of a particular genre or even just being a writer so share away um but thank you so much for tuning into this video i hope you found it helpful if you did you know what to do please share like subscribe all the things i would really really appreciate it and i will see you in the next video don't forget we release videos every tuesday and thursday see you next time